Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about Lightroom Brush. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramadi. I am a French photographer living in Paris. I am back in Paris and I'm very happy about it. I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw files of all my past episodes for free. We're talking thousands, hundreds of raw files, Photoshop actions, presets, Lightroom presets for free. All you have to do is subscribe to my newsletter or click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last episode, I talked to you about using Lightroom brushes. It's a really cool trick. It's probably the most powerful feature in Lightroom. I created a whole bunch of presets. Last week, I already showed you some tricks about that. And this week, I want to go deeper and give you more examples on how you can use Lightroom brushes to get your photos to the next level. Bonjour. Before we get started, I just want to talk to you about this Kickstarter project that I have going on. I'm helping to produce a movie uh, where I play the lead character. It's a long story. It's all explained in the Kickstarter link that's below the video. Check it out. It would be really lovely if you can help me spread the world, if you can make yourself a little investment and if you can share it. If you can do both, I will love you and owe you forever. All right. Now, today I want to talk to you about using Lightroom brushes presets to make a boring photo into an interesting photo. And on my website, if you go to tutorials, Lightroom, presets, you got here something called the Lightroom brush complete package preset. When you have like over 45 brushes. When you buy the presets, what you get is zip files. This three zip files, so when you unzip the package that you get, you get three folders with all the presets. One is called Lightroom Brush Preset Dodge and Burn, Lightroom Brush Preset Landscape, and Lightroom Brush Preset Lights. Okay? All you have to do is jump over to Lightroom and go to Lightroom, Preferences. You go to the second time preset, Show Lightroom Preset Folder. It's going to open the finder again and it's gonna show you where you wanna uh, copy this. So I'm gonna take all three and I'm gonna drag and drop them into the local adjustment preset. This is where you have to go, I repeat, local adjustment preset, not anywhere else, not in develop preset. That's some people has been putting it there. It's in the local adjustment preset. Then all you have to do is restart Lightroom. So I'm just gonna do that. And voila. The presets are installed, but you have to restart Lightroom. That's very important. And now I'm going to show you how we can use this preset to make a pretty boring photo, which is this one, into something which is a bit more artistic, which is bit, uh, a bit more nice, if you see what I mean. So uh, let's do the classic workflow, which you uh, workflow which you know very well. Open up the shadows, bring down the highlights, holding the alt on your keyboard, doing the white and doing the black. If you don't know what that is, please look at some of my past episodes. Then we're gonna go here. I think I'm gonna go to daylight. Daylight is gonna give a little blue feeling to it. And um, I think just, you know, for the basic thing, I'm gonna put a little minus clarity because whenever you do the plus 100, minus 100, it gives a bit of an HDR look. I don't necessarily wanna have that. Uh, and then I'm gonna go to the sharpening put the sharpenings, now this one, I think I'm gonna do directly to about 90, and uh, but I'm gonna mask the sharpening so that it only does, uh, yeah, something like this, a little bit of masking, so it only really sharpens, you know, anything which is black is not getting sharpened, anything which is white is getting sharpened, and you see the mask by pressing the Alt key. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the Unabal Profiles Collection, remove chromatic aberration and do Auto. All right, and Auto, perfect. Now that I'm gonna take this little tool and I'm gonna crop the photo. And now I just have this little thing which I don't like so I can take the spot eraser tool and just, you know, erase that. Make sure that it's gonna copy from something clean and similar. Something like this. Maybe make it a bit closer to it and close. Okay, so now that's a basic retouching. Now we can go crazy artistic. So first I'm gonna go to the brushes. And well, I wanna show you something. If you go to the graded filter, 
now you got a whole bunch 45 new options for the graded filter and uh, I'm gonna go basically for here you have the surge um, dodge and burn darken and then surge dodge and burn lighten and then you got the landscape and then you got the lights okay so let's go to burn surge sky drama and let's make a little graded filter here so already this is going to give us some kind of dramatic sky now you can you can actually try different sky you can go for sky surge see what's going to happen now this is actually not bad sky surge is not bad uh strong much more black and white uh structure and it's just going to give you a different type of sky you can just go through all of them highlight slight and i think on this one i'm going to go to sky surge i think i like that okay and uh, then i'm going to jump into the brush i don't like so much the color of the water so i can same thing here i can uh, i think i want to make the water a little bit warmer so i can go to this uh lights or landscape sky warm and i can just paint some sky warm into the water okay it doesn't do much that's fine and i can just jump over to other options i can jump over to uh, uh sky winter for example and look sky winter is going to make the whole thing a lot more blue now if you think it's too blue you can just correct it a little bit you know take out some of the blue but not i like more the color of the water all right um let's see uh, for example i want to turn on all the lights here in the city so i can just basically click new a new brush i can zoom in pressing the space bar and i can zoom in and i can take the warm glow for example warm glow should be good and with the middle mouse you can make your brush strong uh, you know small or big here there is two lamps and basically i'm turning on the lamps just to make it more interesting and already I have that preset for the lamps which is cool now that's going to take some time so I'm going to make this a little bit faster but one thing is when you uh, when you do this make sure you, you, you lower your brush as you get away because of the uh, the fact that uh, you know further away are the brushes smaller they are getting so smaller should be your brush on every every lamp pole so I'm just making it smaller every time it's gonna be more realistic and it takes you know it takes a little bit of time and voila so let me zoom out and now all the city lights are turned on. If you want to see the before and after of all the brush work we've done so far, you can click here on this little thing and see the before and after. So we've turned on the light, you know, we've done many things, but it's not finished. It is not finished at all. Uh, I always like to sort of close my photo. So uh, actually, I don't like the, the one thing which is cool is that you can always change your viewpoint. I think this guy has some kind of fake colors. So I can just jump back into the gradient, hold on this, and just choose another sky. I'm gonna go for search sky drama and boom, a different sky. I can click on new and I can make a different sky just as a top here. I can add another sky drama just as a top to sort of close the picture and I can do the same thing here, you know, because it just puts the attention of the viewer in inside of the photo. Again, if you wanna see the before and after on, uh, on, the, on the sky, you can do this. Now you can see the little pin here is for the different sky that I've put in. If you don't want to see them as you go out, make sure your show edit pins is on auto. Auto, they're gonna appear while you're editing and as you go out, they're gonna disappear and then you can really see the before and after. Now we've got an interesting sky. Now, you know, I have this uh, this kind of rule about, um, you know, I, I like to make uh, lights a bit more complex. I don't like when it's so even. So this is when I jump again back to the brushes I'm going to click new and I'm going to take this time a dodge brush. I think I'm going to take a dodge strong and um, and I'm just going to add here a little bit of reflection in the water. I think it's kind of cool. And I'm going to click on new and I'm going to take a dodge slight and I'm just going to 
you know, on the on the bridge itself, just make some part slightly brighter. Something like this. Okay. Just to make sure that, you know, the gradient of light is not even. And now, check it out. Before the brush stroke, after the brush stroke. Okay, let me show you the before and after. Backslash key on your keyboard. Before, after. Before, after. Now we've got a nice dramatic photo. We did not go into Photoshop. We just used all these brushes. Uh, and uh, I think it's a pretty, pretty cool effect. So, I mean, you know, what I advise you to do is like, let's say, um, you know, just give it a try. You know, just s do your selection first. Like, let's say I wanted to add fog. I could go to, to brushes and I could make a big brush. I could choose fog. And, you know, I want to add some fog here. It was early in the morning. I want to add some fog here in the back, for example. Okay. Now, way too strong, of course. Well, I can lower the intensity of the fog. That's one thing. But I can also just try some other things. I can try instead of fog, I can try, you know, uh, dodging. So if you don't know what dodging means, it, it lightens, dialing highlights strong, you know, just to make it, or I can try, you know, so I made my selection. You can see if you over your mouse, you can see in red the selection and you can just, you know, see what works the best. Highlight slight, a little bit highlight, a little bit higher. That, that's kind of cool. And, and voila, and if you want to see the before and after again, Make sure you are on auto, and again, before and after. That was that was just a little bit of light there, okay? So, you know, how to make a dramatic photo just using brushes. Brushes, I think, it's the, is the biggest, biggest thing. If you master brushes, your, you know, retouching skills will really go to the next level. Let me show you again the before and the after. Isn't that magic? All right, mesdames et messieurs. Now, I just came up with a new HDR course. It's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. So here is a little trailer. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm happy to announce that I have a new course coming out called the HGR Master Course. I got into photography because of HGR. I love the look that it has. I stopped using HDR a few years back and I got back to it because I really think Photomatics has evolved a lot and it can really do HDR today that are much cleaner, much sharper, uh, with less of an HDR sort of look, but still giving you an incredible impact. I'm going to show you my entire workflow on doing HDR today with Lightroom, Photoshop, Photomatics, digital blending, doing HDR on a single file, how to make HDR with fine art black and white, how to make interior photography with Photomatics. It's got a new option for that, which is really cool. It is my most complete course on HDR. I hope you're going to check it out. It's going to take your HDR photography to the next level.